Hey, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. I'm feeling a little under the weather. Haven't made a video in, in a week, so I thought I'd at least take you around and show you the little projects that are going on. See how humid it is out here? Yeah, I walk outside with glasses fog up. Well, it's that time of year where Really, summer is upon us, and uh, with the heat comes different gardening chores that we have to do. My cucumbers, if you can see them way back there, they are yellow and covered in powdery mildew, so they're coming out. So the beans right next to them, they've given up pretty much. They're coming out as well, because I need to make room for that bed over there to grow some summer crops, some heat-loving crops, and so I'm going to put in some of my sweet potato starts in that bed, along with planting some... Uh, long beans and various other things probably some okra as well but i just wanted to take this time today to uh walk you around some of the projects the little projects that are going on because uh there's not a lot to do out here in the heat right now except harvest and uh yeah take care of some of these chores that need to be done i'm really impressed with these granaderos this is a roma type more of a paste tomato we're going to do some taste testing and uh these are big beefs this is a um, Suttoth strain brandy wine, and it's ready to eat, man. That's, that's nice and ripe. These are black beauties. I really don't like these black beauties. They're getting ripe here, a little soft. That one's a little overripe. But that's what they look like when they're ripe, as opposed to when they're unripe. This so orange area down here is green. Don't really care for them. We've been eating a lot of these, and uh, it's been delicious. I've been harvesting all these uh, edox tomatoes and uh, these are a cherry type they grow on trusses and I've been bringing in pounds and pounds of these and putting them in the freezer because I'm gonna make sauce with them I want you to look at this these are the tomatoes the edox tomatoes that I have been harvesting and I've been placing them in these freezer bags and they've been in my deep freeze I'm saving them up to make spaghetti sauce and to can them you can make sauce out of these cherry tomatoes just as well as you can with any other. And this is pounds and pounds of tomatoes. That is incredible. And the plants are not finished producing. They keep on, they're keeping on. I bought this variety because it's uh, disease resistant, a little bit heat resistant, and a heavy producer. And so far, yeah, it's doing well. To help make this sauce, I bought this vintage uh, strainer. I don't know what you call it, but it, you put your uh, cooked tomatoes in there, rendered down, and you put this in here. It's like a food mill, and you just work it back and forth, and all the good stuff comes out, and the seeds and the skins stays in here. You can put that in your compost bin. I do have uh, an old, I have a, a food mill, but this looks more efficient. I learned about this on... Uh, a channel, a fermenting and preserving channel, um, and I forgot her name. I'll have to put that down in the, in the link section. But that's the plan for those tomatoes. I have another project update. Pickles. This is the pickle ferment that is precisely 14 days old now, and I took them out. I took this batch out at mm, 8 or 9 days. Uh, they were just where I like them. And uh, you can see that it, they cloud up, the, the brine in there clouds up, but these pickles are very delicious. I love them. Uh, I've got some other jars still fermenting. I'm going to give them some more time and compare the difference between uh, a, like a nine, eight or nine day ferment versus maybe a 15 or 16 days. I'm going to try those other ones. But uh, once you are finished with the ferment and you get them where you like them, just put one of these lids on and put it in the fridge and these will keep for six months. Uh, I've even kept them for a year, uh, but these aren't going to make it that long. Uh, these are delicious. I use the brine. The brine is good. So yeah, there's the update on the pickle project. Um, success. Mm. Retains some crunch. Fermented all the way through. Yeah, that's good. Here's an update on my division of my fig division. 
what we did is we came in and took these little uh, bits of fig plant and potted them up. We took off things like this guy right here on this established fig tree and we made sure to get some roots with it and we put them in these pots. Now, the last update on this little project, I showed you that uh, this one here died back. But don't give up on it, look down there. The roots are sending up an, another, another set of leaves. That, that's going to be a success after all. So with our two little rooted cuttings or little rooted suckers, we're gonna have two new fig trees here. So don't give up. If it dies back, the roots are still viable down there. And a lot of times it'll do just that. And after a year or so, we'll have something like this guy. This was actually a cutting, but that's about the size you'll get. Hello, Phoebe, what are you doing? Now I haven't done an official update on my single seed challenge in a long time, but here it is. This is an ahi charapita pepper. And as stunted and little as that thing was when I first started it back during the, the heavy freeze, um, really bounced back it's looking really healthy and it's put on some fruit these little fruits are are supposed to be really spicy so looking forward to that this is my single seed challenge if you're not familiar with the single seed challenge there's a video up there that will tell you all about it anybody can participate all you have to do is grow one single seed and focus on that seed and uh, watch it grow through its life and uh, yeah take care of it appreciate a single seed Normally we plant whole crops of things and we treat our crops as a block or as a unit, as, as a bunch of plants, but this gives us an opportunity to watch the life cycle of a single seed and all that potential stored up in one little seed. This is mine. It's doing great. Here's one project that is ongoing. I haven't showed you this yet, but I'm saving seeds from tomatoes and I'll show you how to do that in a dedicated video. But yeah, things are coming along just fine. We've got the seeds in water fermenting and got a little mold on top. That's okay. But uh, I'll show you how to save seeds so you can plant them next year. These are my Everglades tomato that I got from David the Good. And I really want to grow this variety. So down there in the bottom, you can see those seeds. Somebody was asking me about the pumpkin pit and how I, uh, how I let, just let them sprawl through my yard. We can see... I do let them sprawl and I just weed trim around them. You can see this one has some vine borer damage right here in the middle and those leaves are getting a little yellow that uh, have borers in them. But uh, yeah, they're rooting along the path. And you can see there's borer damage right there on that one, but it's been rooting along the path and so there's growth way out here that is its own little plant. It's a modular system, these cucurbita moshadas. And look here, I'm getting a butternut squash right there. Look at that. It's beautiful, huh? Here's another project that I'm going to start. This ugly little thing was given to me by David the Good. This is a yam, a true yam. It is a Dioscoria alata. And I'm going to see if I can grow this tropical variety right here on the edge of its, uh, well, the edge of where you can grow them. I'm in zone 9A. It should do fine for me. And uh, he told me how to plant it, and we're going to have a video on that, or fold it into a video, and uh, see if we can get some true yams. This is a perennial. If you let it, we won't be harvesting this until next year, at least. Isn't that ugly? It's supposed to be like a, a white flesh on the inside. One of the videos we have in store for you is all about tomatoes. We're going to grow tomatoes from seed to table. And I'm going to show you everything you need to know about growing tomatoes. It might be too late for you where you are, but it'll come in handy in the fall or maybe next year. We're also going to do a video on seed, saving seeds from tomatoes and all that's coming up when I start to feel a little bit better. So thanks for joining me today on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Hope you have happy gardening. We'll talk to you next time.